water is, it's inspiring for me, and water, I feel, is one of our most important natural resources. The water has a very, very calming effect on me, as I think it probably does with most people. Clean water is important because it just shows that the environment is healthy and we're taking care of our environment. In the hills of northern New Jersey, a small river flows through the suburban landscape of Morris County. Underground springs, mountain lakes, and surface water runoff from rain feed its streams and tributaries to form the Whippany River. This reservoir is in the headwaters of the Whippany River. It's the top of the Whippany River watershed. There's groundwater that seeps into the reservoir and also the runoff from rain. And as the reservoir fills, it spills over and goes down into the tributary, which eventually makes its way into the Whippany River. George Van Orden is the environmental scientist and the health officer for Hanover Township, New Jersey. He's studied the Whippany River from one end to the other for more than 30 years. As the river moves downstream, it picks up more and more water. The volume of the, of the river becomes bigger, the river becomes wider, and then it eventually discharges to the Rockaway River. After 16 miles, the Whippany River loses its identity when it flows into the Rockaway River. The Rockaway joins the Passaic River and is a source of drinking water for a million people in New Jersey before it crashes over the Great Falls National Park in Patterson. But for some, the Whippany River is more than a source of drinking water. I love kayaking very, very much. It's very fun to slide in the water. It's a feeling of freedom. I like open space. I think it helps people with the hectic lifestyle that we have. You can sort of just have some time to yourself, time to think. When I put my kayak in the water and you feel like the rush of the water, you can just tell that it's going to be like so peaceful and quiet. It's kind of like a way of being independent and you almost feel like you're exploring a new place. And you feel like you're not in New Jersey, you're away from all the craziness. It does give you a new focus and a new, it's a breath of fresh air. Most people driving by wouldn't guess the small garden in front of this house opens up to a natural paradise in back. Donna Bangiola has lived directly above the Whippany River for 22 years. I'm a water person. I gravitate toward it. I get to watch a whole lot of different kinds of nature that come through and use the water. So I appreciate the water for what the life that it brings to the environment. For people like Jeff Kurt, fly fishing for trout is how he likes to enjoy the river. I'm a New Jersey native. I've been fishing this upper part of the Whippany River for about 25 years. The fishing is surprisingly good. You know, we're not in Montana, but uh, it's a place to come out and get a, a fish or two. There's wild brown trout and wild rainbow trout. There's only a handful of streams in the east that I know that have wild rainbow trout. And you never know what you're going to catch. So it's, a, it's a, just a pleasant place to, to get away from it all. Fishing and a ready source of fresh water are just some of the reasons why the Whippany River was a magnet for Native Americans and later European settlers. Over the years, the Whippany River was uh, an incredible resource to making Hanover what it is today. And you probably have to step back a little bit when this was a farm community in the 1800s and the river had its uses then. It powered mills, it powered dams. For nearly 200 years, the predominant industry along the Whippany River was paper. The river's water supply was essential for manufacturing, and by the 1900s, there were at least five paper mills along the river. And of course, that transitioned Hanover into the early 1900s when it became more of a manufacturing community. Whippany Paperboard Company came into Hanover, so the Whippany River became a resource for cooling, a resource for powering these various plants and factories that we had. In contrast to the growing industrialization along the river, the Whippany was idealized for its scenic beauty, which graced postcards throughout the region and inspired songwriters to romanticize the river. 
Roberta Foster and her husband, Alan, still have a recording of a song called Whippany Waters. This is a souvenir 45 record that I got in, it was probably around 1970, maybe the late 60s. It was given out at a little general store that was in Whippany. So we were very excited. We took it home, put it on, and listened to this song. There's a big yellow moon for a tired lagoon. There's a river that flows. In this song, it's, I guess, the story about a proposal. And it goes, roll on, whippany, you're a good friend to me. You and the big yellow moon, with the help of us three, she said yes to me. I remember us rolling on the floor laughing, just thinking about how absurd it would be to have a marriage proposal by the Whippany River of our era with the brown, ugly sludge and the smells and everything. The Whippany was a constant presence in Alan Foster's childhood, as was the pollution. Actually, I grew up quite close to the river. And myself and the other kids in the neighborhood, we spent all summer out there. And it was just the woods behind, and then there was the river right there. There was a stream that led to the river that we dug out a hole and we used to dam the thing up. Down at the bottom was this black, and I mean black, not dark brown, I mean black goop. And we used to play in this stuff. That's where we used to play, right down in there. Only, you know, I think now what the heck that stuff was. <laughs> and it was from the paperboard. We were told never ever to let the water touch us because it had bad things in it. It was just something growing up that you just knew that this river was not a wholesome place <laughs> to go splashing around. Four decades later, pollution is still a problem for the majority of New Jersey's waterways. There's definitely pollution that I've seen in water. We also teach our children to take good care of the waterways. We teach them about pollution. That's really important for children to know that, that polluting the water here actually affects someplace else. The way to get people to really learn about it and put it into their life is when you educate youngsters, right from elementary, middle school, right on through. To educate and engage youngsters about water pollution, Hanover's health officer, George Van Orden, invited a class of eighth grade science students to town hall to learn about the river that flows through their community and what the township had to do to clean it up. How many of you are familiar with the Whippany River? Know where the Whippany River is? In the mid-1980s, when I first got here, we had a problem in Hanover Township. Um, I used to get complaints all the time about the way that the, the river smelt, the odors that were coming off the river. And we used to look, I used to look down into the river, and basically you could never see the bottom, all right? All you saw this cloudiness. And, you know, every so often when you get fish kills, you know, you would see dead fish. What are some examples of water pollution? How can we pollute the water? People littering, putting like their garbage in the streams. Or yeah, lakes. and eventually that washes downstream. All right, what else? When my dad washes the car, the, the soap and the car stuff goes straight down the drain. Yeah, and, and that could act as a pollutant. What are some other examples of contamination? How do we contaminate runoff? Your name, please? Amanda, factories can like dump their chemicals and garbage into like rivers and lakes. Yeah, what, that's what we call a point source. A point source is a pipe from like a company or an industry or a wastewater treatment plant that discharges into that river or stream. One of the biggest point sources of water pollution in Hanover was the Whippany Paperboard Company. Do your parents ever talk about Whippany Paperboard, the old mill? Do you know? Yes. It was an old paper mill that's shut down now. Yeah. Actually, the Whippany Paperboard uh, Company had three mills in Hanover Township. And yeah, they did shut down. They, were, they closed their operation back in 1980. They used to produce about 1,000 tons of paperboard every day. And they used to generate a paper sludge. And what they did, they used to dump that paper sludge into the river. 
They tried treating it, but many times the treatment was not effective. The Whitney Paperboard Mill itself was very large, it took up probably 80 acres uh, in uh, the middle of town, and it was right adjacent to the Whitney River. Sal Ayanna Cohn served on the Hanover Township Committee for 35 years, including 17 as mayor. They had trucks constantly going in and out. What they did is they accepted scrap paper, scrap cardboard, and they turned it into paper. The Eden Mill on the Whippany River, featured in this newsreel, manufactured recycled paper and was one of the biggest paper mills on the East Coast. Huge trucks loaded with bales of waste paper roll up to paper mills like in Whippany, New Jersey, every day. This titanic paper-making machine is turning old waste paper into nice new cardboard. The, the Eden Mill was the biggest plant. They had four paper-making machines. They, they ran three shifts a day, seven days a week. It was a 365-day-a-year operation, yeah. never shut down. Joe Sancelli and his brothers, Frank and Randy, worked for Whippany Paperboard when their father, Joe Sr., was a maintenance manager at the mills. In town, uh, Whippany Paperboard operated, uh, it was Eden Mill, Hanover Mill, Stony Brook Mill. They had the beater room, which was the uh, uh, first phase of the whole operation, with a giant vat probably five, 10,000 gallons of hot steaming water that they dumped all the waste paper in to break it down. From the beaters, it would get pumped to the, mm. what we called the wet end. Now, the number one and two machine made quality cardboard, like pizza box type cardboard. Three and four made the fly paper, the brown rolls, but they needed you know, water to make it uniform as it went through. And water was used for uh, almost everything in those plants. So the water out of the river, they had hoses, they had fire lines, they had tanks that stored water from the river to use for, uh, there was a lot of different re uh, reasons why they took the water out of the river. In the 1960s, the Whippany Paperboard Company built a treatment plant designed to reduce pollutants in their wastewater and paper sludge at the mills. They had their own treatment plant on the opposite side of the river. That wastewater would be treated and then released back into the river. But the paperboard company never completely solved their paper mill's pollution problem. And unfortunately, they were dumping everything uh, in the river. And uh, that was creating quite a smell. And the odor was always there. So uh, it was very hard to live in this town and not know that the Whippany paperboard was a presence. Whippany Paperboard's mills dumped their wastewater into the river until they went out of business in 1980. But that's not the end of the story. In 1982, Whippany Paperboard sold the mills to the Container Company of America. They made all the necessary applications and got all the permits necessary from the Department of Environmental Protection down in the state of New Jersey to open up the mill. They were going to manufacture pretty much in the same fashion that Whippany Paperboard did. And when we learned about that, we had a lot of questions before they came in. And we weren't getting the right answers. And a lot of the residents were very upset with that because they didn't want those plants to reopen. They didn't want to, have to deal with the soot in the air. They didn't want the pollution in the river again. Well, I think the community was outraged. I received a number of personal letters from citizens who were very much opposed to the whole idea of letting them open up again. Dear Mayor Ayanacon, a paper mill powered by coal is a heavy polluter, and no suburban town with thinking citizens would wish its reactivation. We ask you to please stand up for the residents of Hanover Township. We do not want a repeat of those past years when we heard and smelled Whippany paperboard in our sleep. My family and others on our street will back all of your efforts to keep pollution out of Whippany and will help in any way we can. Let's keep Hanover a safe, clean, and healthy place to live. Barbara Blumenfeld was active in the campaign to stop the paper mills from reopening in Hanover. When a paper mill is open, it was a terrible pollutant for the air and the water. And we were totally against that. The community, they knew about heated waters going into the river and the fish kills that would take place. They knew about the pollutants. They knew what kind of sludge came out of the paper mills. 
we had a candlelight vigil and we got stronger and stronger. We made sure we had articles in the newspaper and that's how it's that mushroomed into a big, big movement. And they started a grassroots petition signing at all the supermarkets in town. So they were well organized, these citizens, and they didn't want this to happen again. Faced with strong public opposition, the Container Corporation of America failed in its efforts to reopen the paper mills on the Whippany River. When the community finally realized and the town fathers finally realized that we had fought the fight, won the fight, and that uh, CCA, Container Corporation of America, would not be coming in, uh, we exhaled. It was a big sigh of relief to us. It's definitely a source of pride that we were able to accomplish what we did, considering that this town at one time was run by the paper mills. That was the main source of income. And it just got to a point where we, you know, the people of the town didn't want to take it anymore, and they stood up for what they believed in, and it worked, which to me is still amazing. The community had won an environmental victory over a big corporation, but the foul odor coming off the river was still there. You could smell it all over town. It, it was nauseating, actually. It was kind of a fishy, odory, you know, chemical smell. My mother would say, take a bath or you'll smell like the Whippany River. When I first came into office, we saw what the effects were on the river from years and years of manufacturing, uh, disposing into the river and making use of the river water. It led to a great deal of changes that we knew had to be made. The catalyst for making those changes was a young environmental scientist who had just been hired by the township. George Van Orden. Well, when I first started working here, I went out and took a look at the river, and I, I couldn't believe how, how bad, bad of a shape the Whippany River was in. In speaking with people from the township here, the, they uh, refer to the Whippany River as like an open sewer. And so the township committee was very interested in seeing what needed to be done to, to clean up this river and, again, make it a valuable resource. The township supported Van Orden's graduate work to study the water quality in the Whippany River and to investigate the sources of its pollution. Back then, we, I had 26 stations along the Whippany River where I'd run along, take measurements, take samples, um, and then do my evaluation. Dissolved oxygen is the one parameter that we look at uh, to try to determine the health of a river. As the water quality improves, uh, and you get dissolved oxygen levels increasing, then you start seeing an increase in that diversity and you see a good, healthy ecosystem and, and a much healthier uh, river. Oh, I was wondering, like, what's the difference between, like, dissolved oxygen and, like, regular oxygen? Basically, we have oxygen in the air, right? Okay, so we, and we need that oxygen to live. What happens is a certain amount of that oxygen dissolves into the water and we call that dissolved oxygen, all right? That dissolved oxygen is the oxygen that the fish and the other aquatic organisms use, all right, to, to basically live. I found out that a number of locations along the Whippany River dissolved oxygen levels were extremely low, indicating a highly polluted water. Van Orden also found something else. When I was doing that sampling, I found out that the fecal indicators were extremely high above the Morristown Sewage Treatment Plant. And I couldn't un, uh, understand where that source would be. So he extended his study of the river further upstream from Hanover and made a startling discovery. I actually located the source as being these two discharge points where Morristown was discharging raw sewage directly into the Whippany River. In seeing this, I was, I was shocked. This is a picture that I took back in 1985. All right, you know what that is? Is it the Whippany River? Okay, that is the Whippany River. But what is that pipe dumping into the Whippany River? Does anybody know? Joe. Raw sewage. Raw sewage. That was raw sewage that the town of Morristown was dumping into the Whippany River at two locations. It was raw sewage. It came right out of people's homes, right into the river. Let me just show you this other picture. That was a little bit downstream. That's toilet paper that was accumulating on the rocks of the Whippany River. Yuck. Would you want to swim there? Would you want that to be your drinking water source? 
All right, pretty disgusting. Why are we concerned about this? Because the Whippany River flows to the Rockaway River and then to the Passaic. Yeah, so. right. All right, what is it in raw sewage that can make us sick? There's bacteria, parasites, and diseases carried through it. Yes, okay, in sewage we're gonna have disease-causing organisms, all right, that can make us very, very sick. Well, as I was writing my reports, I can just c continue to visualize this raw sewage being discharged into the river with toilet paper and all these other types of things. I understood that as a public health officer that this is something that I could not allow because it was putting people's lives, all right, in jeopardy downstream. Van Orden reported the results of his study to township officials, noting, the Morristown sewage treatment plant outfall is grossly in violation of state standards. The Whippany River is being contaminated with feces from a human source. He began to look at the river and water quality, and what he brought to our attention was just astonishing and devastating. Morristown's treatment plant was completely inadequate. They could not get the sewage into the plant because their uh, infrastructure was all falling apart. And at times, they were just bleeding the raw sewage directly into the river. I came to the Marstown Sewer Utility in June of 1981. John Dean was here in the 1980s when the treatment plant couldn't handle all the sewage Morristown was generating. The original plant at that time was a smaller facility that was basically hydraulically overloaded and organically overloaded. But you have what you consider partially or untreated uh, sewage going in the river. Van Orden says he tried to get Morristown to stop dumping raw sewage in the river, but they refused. Well, one of the excuses that I was continuously getting from the state and from Morristown was that um, these things were going to be taken care of in a couple of years, all right? And I was very concerned about that. I did not want to wait a couple of years for that to happen. He's telling me that we can't live with the situation and that it's a danger to the community, and I have to take some action. So the, I took the only action you can take, which is to sue Morristown. We wanted them to stop. We wanted them to stop polluting the river. I was in court the day the judge made its ruling. And it didn't take long for the judge to make a decision. The judge ordered Morristown to stop that raw sewage discharge into the river and also to better operate their wastewater treatment plant to prevent you know, these contaminants from getting into the river. The court ordered a sewer ban in Morristown until they upgraded the treatment plant and its capacity to handle their sewage. That was the turning point. The litigation and winning the litigation against Morristown for remediation of the sewer plant was the turning point. Well, after the court order, Morristown, they did everything that they were supposed to do. They did build a plant there that was extremely high level plant. I was here for the beginning of it. My boss had left. Uh, the court order was in place. DEP was involved. Uh, you know, it was a tough time. Today, John Dean is the superintendent and licensed operator of the Morristown Sewage Treatment Plant. This plant, which went online in 92, was also a major improvement in the quality of our treatment. The problems in the past are pretty much gone. No, the old plant was like Stone Ages <laughs> compared to this operation now. John Dean says Morristown's investment in upgrading their sewage treatment has paid off. What we have here now is what we call final effluent. This is the raw sewage that started at the beginning of the plant. It's gone through three to four phases of treatment. This is clean sewage. We're probably about a step below drinking water standards or close to drinking water standards, yes. And not only is the water clean, the energy used to run the sewage treatment plant is generated by this solar panel field that reduces costs and helps the environment. Here we have 3,400 panels. Secondly, we're producing enough power to run our operation on good days. And thirdly, we're feeding electricity back into the grid through a clean source that's being used by somebody else. That means that we're uh, being a positive effect on the environment. 
After the lawsuit and Hanover's victory in court, Hanover's health officer discovered one day in 1992 that the Whippany River had begun to recover. I was standing right here on the bridge looking down and I saw this fish swimming around. I said, I couldn't believe it. I said, is that a bass? And then I looked down again, I noticed that it was a bass and, and right away when you see bass in the water, it indicates that the water's cleaner. And so I was completely thrilled, got into my truck, ran back to the municipal building, had to tell everybody in the building that I saw a bass in the Whippany River. And what that meant to me was the Whippany River is now coming back. Um, how long did it take you guys to clean the river for the fish to come back? About 1992, I started to see some real improvements. And then we started doing analysis of the river over time and things got better. You know, into 2001, 2002, things got better. And I did some recent analysis and, and things are even better. Let me ask one, one quick question. How would you feel if the Whippany River was gone? If you no longer had this resource? I think it would be pretty depressing because even though to you it's just a river that you drive by, it means a whole lot more than what you actually see. And it's the heart of the ecosystem. So who's going to the Whippany River today? Maybe not today. All right, and why? Why are you going to the Whippany why, why would you want to go to the Whippany River today? can see the bottom. You want to go and see if you can see the bottom? Okay, I guarantee you can. I'd want to go down there to see how clean it looks compared to the pictures you showed us of how it looks so dirty like 20 years ago compared to how it looks today. I would, uh, I would go down there to see if there's any opportunities that I could help uh, make the river even better than it already is. After all these years of taking the river for granted, I think I should just it's the least I can do is take the, the time out of my day to go down to the river and actually admire it for a change. Yeah. On days like today, it's going to look really nice. Really nice. There's, there's such a beauty to this river. And you know what? Sometimes when I'm really stressed out, I'll go sit by the river and I'll watch the river and I'll listen to the river. All right? And it calms me down. All right? It's funny how that happens, but it does happen. The river now is clear, it's beautiful, it's lovely to look at compared to what it was, and there is no smell at all. It's a complete turnaround from what it was. Today, the Whippany River has made great strides, but there is much still to be done. Local government and concerned citizens can play a vital role in the ecological health of a river. And in Hanover Township, where big corporations once routinely polluted the river, at least one company is now helping to clean it up. Our team within Bear was looking for a way to do something that would be good for the communities. And the idea of helping out here locally um, with something as, as uh, valuable as trying to clean up a river really, really brought a lot of volunteers. I participated in this, in this cleanup. We had about 100 volunteers to come out and spend the day helping to clean the river. I think Hanover is doing it in a very, very nice way, along with the Watershed Action Committee, um, of tapping into businesses. Since the river's return to health, the Whippany River Watershed Action Committee was formed and has taken the lead to preserve, protect, and maintain the land and water resources of the watershed through community action projects, education, and promotion of resource conservation. I think they've done a great effort in uh, restoring the river, and it's so nice to have that in your town. And now it seems with the restoration and all the work they've done cleaning it up, it's become a drawing card. It's become one of the centerpieces of Hanover Township. To me, it's a, it's a bit of a symbol of how far we've come in a broader sense. I mean, back in the 60s, the word environmentalism didn't even exist. So we've come a long way. The river has come a long way, and I, I think it's a just sort of a good symbol of that. I would say over the last 20 years, we've seen a big improvement. It's a good thing that the, the Whippany River has improved. Like I said, it's, it's a much nicer place to be around. And it's nice to see clean water in New Jersey. There's a big yellow moon or a tired lagoon. There's a river that flows sleepy too. June lingers there amid 
lowlands there, while stars fade in waters of blue. Roll on, Whippany, you're a good friend to me. You and the big yellow moon, with the help of us three. She said yes to me. May you ever roll on with a With the help of us three, she said yes to me. May you ever roll on with a knee.